Good morning. This is Reverend Pam Gagan from the Center for Spiritual Living Pleasant Valley in Camarillo, California. Welcome to our Sunday service on Facebook Live. Good Sunday, everybody. Welcome to the Center for Spiritual Living, Pleasant Valley. I'm Reverend Lynn Chaplin Noe. Before we go any further, make sure you start your um, uh, watch parties right now. Okay, share the word. So we have a great morning for you or afternoon, whatever it is for you, because we know so many people all over the country and the world are watching. So we have, as our special guest today, uh, Reverend uh, Joe DeWitt, and he's a physicist as well. Reverend Pamela Gagan, our spiritual leader, is here. And Reverend Betty Ann Brennan is our assistant minister, and we're so thrilled to have her. Buzz Noe is here with the news, with the buzz, and a and Bill Rotella, what a treat. We have Bill Rotella making some music for us today. It's going to be a wonderful day. So we are the Center for Spiritual Living. And our mission, our vision is awakening humanity to its spiritual magnificence. And how we do that is training, teaching and demonstrating spiritual principles for living an abundant and fulfilling life in a welcoming, compassionate community. And here are our flames of faith. We believe there is one source and many paths leading to that source. We honor all faiths, Buddhism, Christianity, Hinduism, Judaism, Sufism, and all others that step forward in love. There's that one fine thread that connects and re reignites all religions in the world, and that thread is love. We come from love, we are love, and we honor our oneness within all. And now, of course, it's my pleasure to introduce with our um, uh, quote for the day, Reverend Betty Ann Brennan. Howdy, everybody. This is a good time to use these good words for this morning and on through the week. And they go like this. I open myself to the joy contained in every experience. My path is custom built just for me. And now to solidify those ideas and get us going, I'm proud to have Pamela Bailey, our lead practitioner for the opening prayer. Okay, thank you, Reverend Betty Ann. Yes, and great ideas to live by. So we're going to have a centering treatment. If you would, uh, relax wherever you are. Close your eyes if appropriate. If driving, please don't. And, and just... Take a couple of deep breaths, just in and out and in and out, just allowing that energy of the breath to flow freely, to, to enliven and then to be released. And so as we are here together in love, in connection, in inquiry, in learning and growing, just knowing that there is that one source, that divine source that is the center, the origin and the all of all of life. And so as there is that one source, that one power, that one creative presence that is the source of all of life, each and every one of us, is one with that source as a part of life that is flowing dynamically, energetically, beautifully, no matter what it looks like in the moment. And we know that we are here, each and every one of us, we are here at this time 
on purpose. We are here to be the light. We are here to stand for the good. We are here to know the truth. And as I know the truth, I know that each and every person present here is one with God and has access every moment to the power, the intelligence, the presence, and all the healing and knowledge and inspiration that's needed each moment. And all it takes is opening up to it. So as we are here together today, my prayer is that each of us open up, that we turn within, but not stay within. We turn within to allow that which is within to come out and express. And that expression is creative, it's joyous, it's compassionate, it's powerful, and it's whatever is needed at the moment. So today we are having a wonderful talk. We're learning some wonderful things and we can take those with us. And in each moment we can be that place of love, that place where there is a purpose to our being here. And we know that purpose and we live and move and have our being in God, in that purpose. And so this day is a beautiful day and it is the perfect day unfolding right now. And each of us is here as a healing, learning, growing president presence, no accidents. And each of us goes out to spread that love, that joy, that compassion. And so I am grateful for all of that. I am grateful for every person here, for every person watching, and I am grateful for this day to go forth and to be present in the beauty of life itself. And I know that all of these things are unfolding perfectly right now and in closing, and so it is. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Pamela. And this is like, uh, this is, this is it's so funny. There are no coincidences or no accidents, as you said. And, and I'm going to be introducing Planting Seeds by uh, Daniel Namod, one of my favorite songs. But you are planting seeds. And it's so funny when you said president, because the presidential election's all in our mind. So there are no coincidences or no mistakes. So now it's my honor to introduce Daniel Namod with Planting Seeds. been a long time running I never knew then what I know I know now that the fruits they always come in but you can't go around just knocking them down it takes a long time to show in we plant the seeds then and we look at them now but the roots are always growing no matter if I'm there or never around Whatever grows will grow, whatever dies will die, whatever works will work, whatever flies will fly, whatever fails will fail, what's meant to soar will soar. I am planting seeds, nothing It's more. like your whole life. You've been training for this moment and when the time comes you just disown it Meaning you just surrender, don't control it Not interested in the clay pots and mold it Or sitting next to the path trying to unfold it Or waiting for the fruits to fall down toward you Let it go and now you're flowing feeling quite gorgeous So you take steps away instead of towards it What a rush feeling freedom with nothing to hold We've been taught that what you touch will always turn to gold And now we're learning when we let it go it overflows With no credit to take cause no credit is home A higher power working deeper with a seed are sowed and when the seeds are true then they're seeds of gold but the real gold is joy when life starts to flow and when it does you just smile cause now you know i spent a long time running i never knew then what i know i know now let the fruits they always come in but you can't go around just knocking them down it takes a long time to show in we plant the seeds then and we look at them now but the roots are always growing no matter if i'm there or never around Whatever grows will grow, whatever
Whatever dies will die. Whatever works will work. Whatever flies will fly. Whatever fails will fail. What's meant to soar will soar. I am planting seeds. Whatever grows, yep. will grow. When it grows, it grows. Whatever dies will die. And when it dies, it dies. Whatever Come on. Works, work. If it works, it works. Whatever flies will let it fly. Let it fly. Whatever fails will fail. When it fails, it fails. What's meant to soar will soar. When it soars, it soars. I am planting seeds. Whatever grows, will grow. Let it grow. Let it grow. Whatever And now it's my honor to introduce What's the Buzz with our wonderful announcer with the announcements, Buzz Noe. Take it, Buzz. Thank you, Reverend Pam, and good morning, everyone. <clears throat> this week, we'll bring October to a close. Let's continue to know that our wellness still flows and our connection with spiritual per perfection has arose. As we all discover the perfection we seek, here are the announcements for this week. At 9 a.m. weekdays on Facebook Live, Reverend Pam's meditations will help allow you to thrive. This week's meditation will get your wholeness revealed and allow illusions of imperfection to be healed. <clears throat> Writers Group meets tomorrow evening from 7 to 9. Come join in and learn how better to write. It's a fun way to spend your Monday night. This pandemic is changing our lives every day, but let's continue to know that we'll all be okay. If you desire some assistance to help you get through, you can email or call us and we will be here for you. And a reminder to please continue to donate to our center. Your donations will keep our center going so we can be here to keep your wellness flowing. And uh, two other places where you can lend a hand. So please do give them whatever you can. Ventura County Rescue Mission provides the homeless with much good and Ventura County Food Share feeds the needy in our hood. Another way to support our center is to use Amazon Smile, where whenever you enter on the purchase page for the items you got, it'll donate to our center right on the spot. There's the link for the Amazon Smile, or you can go uh, on the line. It's also on our website, so you can find it there. So join Amazon Smile, and whenever you go to Amazon, it donates to the center. So thank you for that. And next weekend, there'll be some fun costumes we'll be seeing. So please do have yourselves a happy Halloween. And that's it for the announcements. And now with words to make us feel okay, here's Reverend Betty Ann Brennan, our practitioner of the day. Good morning, everyone. We have uh, a lot of things to look at and consider these days. Someone mentioned elections and that's uh, something that's trying on all of us, but we still have maintain our power and so i want to let you know how you're going to use that so you can bring about the change that you're looking for uh romans 8 18 tells us the pain that you've been feeling can't compare to the joy that is coming wonderful words to think on 
Um, good things come to those who believe. Better things come to those who are patient. And the best things come to those who don't give up. So whatever the challenge, whatever is desirable, it means to, to give it on, move it on. And how can we do this? I looked to Dr. Ernest Holmes and found some very good advice. And so I'm passing it on to you. When you want to do a big thing, get a mental pattern. Make it perfect. Know just what it means. Enlarge your thought. Keep it to yourself. Pass it over to the creative power behind all things. Wait and listen. And when the impression comes, follow it with assurance. Don't talk to anyone about it. Give it your attention. Never pay, excuse me, never listen to negative talk or pay attention to it. And you will succeed where all others fail. And I want to doubly emphasize keeping that secret and letting go into God. If you create a fine idea, then you have done your job. Let it go and let God do the rest of the job. Please join me in a centering prayer. I recognize that there is a great power within my grasp and that I have been endowed with a mind that is creative. So as I create, as I see desires, as I know things to come to pass, I can see how everything fits in together each having its purpose as we move through each experience it is something that we we put in our lives and it becomes a new way of living things are changing and i open myself to be free and secure in the change i will fear nothing for i am guarded and guided and wisely taken care of it is the love within that surrounds all my desires and creates whatever is necessary to bring these desires into a physical demonstration. And so right now, I know that everything is as it should be, turning to the best for all. We are indeed building a world that will work for everyone. And so with a great feeling of gratitude, with a great idea of wonder coming on the scenes i just let this these words go and i give them their freedom knowing all is done my life is unfolding perfectly no matter what and so i just cap this off with our command and so it is and so, and so it i is. believe bill rotella is up next i always get on the de ticket with Bill, and I really like that. So come Me give too. us more inspiration. Right on. <laughs> okay, hi. Good morning, everybody. Happy Sunday. And I hear that we have a new grandpa in the house. Is that true, Joe? Right on, buddy. Well, I'll tell you what. This song right here, I just see this is what happens. This is what happens on the uh, Center for Spiritual Living Highway. Things just appear. So the song changed because of you. Thank you. Because I haven't played this for a while, but I wrote this for my granddaughter. When she was like two years old or so, um, and uh, you know Pam likes it, so if Pam likes it, I can do it again. You know what I mean? So this is called uh, uh, Morning Star. This is uh, dedicated to your grandson or granddaughter, whichever. Dedicated to your granddaughter or grandson. Here you go. Granddaughter. Morning star, how I wonder what you are. You make me smile, you're a candle shining in my heart. When you laugh, 
It feels like sunshine. Come walk with me. Put your hand in mine. Life is fine because you're mine. Morning star. Open your eyes. Time to greet another day. Feel the sunlight dancing. Feel her kisses up and down your face. There's no hurry. We've got time. Let's sit beneath this morning sky. Life is fine because you're mine. Morning star. Yeah, never far from where you are. Morning star. I do love that. And for those who are watching, uh, he has a video with his granddaughter and family and other kids playing on the beaches of Hawaii uh, with this music. And I just invite you to go to Bill Rotello Music and hear all of his music. And again, I always love being with you. Thank uh, you so much. <laughs> See you at the end. See you after the talk. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and now it is truly my honor to introduce uh, physicist Joe DeWitt, and he uh, is such an amazing person, and he is also a parapsychologist, but first I'm just going to do a little bit of his intro. I mean, his, not only his vision right here, but then his bio. His bio is so diverse. He is amazing. And he is a real renaissance guy. That's the best label I can put on you right now at this moment, Joe. And so his vision is creating the, create the vision, execute to success, have fun. And I'm just gonna, I shortened your bio just a little because I want you to, and then I'll, I'll ask you to tell us some, some what, of what we've shared uh, on the phone together. So Joe has been involved in project and program management for over 30 years and has led technical teams on a wide range of products. He has a BA in physics, uh, I did graduate physics work at UC Santa Barbara and earned an MBA from the University of Laverne. His passions are guitar, uh, bass, singing, music, getting out the vote, and curiosity about all things in the universe. He lives in Santa Barbara with his wife Jacqueline and a Labrador retriever, Olivia. Now, this is what it even gets even more interesting. His metaphysical research uh, took him uh, to search out and get a bachelor's, and he's working on a master's in metaphysics. And I believe it was with through or with the uh, uh, supported by Emerson Institute, which a lot of the CSL members have gone to. And so when he was in college, and I'm going to tell you, I'm going to ask you to tell 
uh, that whole story in a minute. Uh, he was given a book on astral projection, and he started his journey from that into the metaphysical psychic phenomena and the study of parapsychology. And so he switched majors at that time from biomedical uh, engineering to physics. And in that switch, he became more and more in tune with astrology, parapsychology, and cosmic consciousness. And he also took classes in Buddhism, Christian mysticism, and the philosophy of religion during his undergraduate uh, program in his metaphysical studies. studies he developed uh, an electrical method for measuring acupunctural points. He studied the pyramids, Kirillon uh, photography, uh, he led, he charted a course for becoming a parapsychology and obtaining a PhD in physics. And in that process, he was also invited at one point to join a 50s, 60s rock and roll band by the uh, lead singer who was also a UCSB student. And to this day, he is called Joe, I now Reverend Joe, Lumpy in Captain Cardiac and the Coronaries. And at that, I am just going <laughs> to, I love that. And according to those who know you and have seen you play, you're quite a hit in Santa Barbara. Uh, so welcome, welcome, welcome. I don't want to take any more time up with talking about you. I want to talk to you, which you're so, so fascinating uh, to talk to. So in when you first started um, at, in the dorm, as you said, in college, when you first were in college, Tell us about what happened and what made you more interested in the metaphysical world beyond the physical experience, please. Uh, the day I arrived, um, I actually, I had a girlfriend back home and a guy, my next door neighbor handed me the book and he goes, well, you could visit her uh, if you astrally project, which was about 400 miles away. I go, oh, this is great. Um, so that just got me into all the uh, metaphysics stuff. Uh, I had grown up in a Baptist church by myself. My parents were involved and pretty much left the church after uh, the day I graduated from high school. So uh, then just the astral projection fascinated me. Uh, I'd, all, I'd been into astrology a little bit, but not much. But the, the defining moment that, that kind of nailed me into uh, pursuing a career in parapsychology, which is the scientific study of phenomena. And so they're, they're pretty tight about, you know, making sure their experiments is, their experiments are repeatable and all that. So it was a, it, it was a scientific approach that I wanted to do. Um, the, the story that I relayed to Pam was my uh, father was sick. And so I go, okay. I, so I did an affirmation, um, because I was just learning about that as well, uh, to astrally project down and visit my parents in, in the San Fernando Valley from Sacramento. And so I went to bed that night and I had a dream that I was, um, I was standing in front of a casket in a, in a known mortuary close by my parents' house. And, uh, and I go, oh shoot, my father passed away. And then my parents join me in the dream on either side. And I go, well, okay, if you guys are alive, who's in the casket? And then I decided at that point, I was hovering over my body in the dorm room. And, and I, I guess in the book, it explained this phenomenon. What I saw was a flat, uh, just an out, like a shadow of myself on the bed with uh, light waves um, going back and forth between the head and the toe, kind of rippling. And I, I go, oh, okay, if I match the frequency of my astral body, I shall, and, and in that moment, I touched down into my body and I was staring at the roof. And that this was Friday night, Saturday morning. And so I wrote that down because I've kept a log of my dreams almost all my life. And then Monday morning, my mother calls me and says, uh, your, your grandmother passed away this morning. And I go, is she in the mortuary on Reseda Boulevard facing and the, and the doors open to the West? And she was silent for a little bit. And she said, how, how do you know this? And I go, then I told her about the dream that that scared the daylights out of her, this, that, I would have, you know, that I would have had that happen. And so from that experience, which I still have yet to really explain, 
uh, propelled me into learning mathematics, learning, you know, physics and learning everything else that possibly we could explain such things. But, you know, that's a time phenomenon. And, you know, I, I still haven't, you know, got to where that might be explained by physics. But with all the new physics that's coming out with um, entanglement and, and those type of things, maybe there's something there. So after that, it was like, you know, I took, I moonlighted with courses on the side of astrology, cosmic consciousness, uh, parapsychology taught by an engineering professor, oddly enough, um, and then applied to grad school to hopefully become a physicist doing parapsychology. And so how, how did, um, what is that desire that you had? What led you to that desire to see beyond who you were in this physical life? I guess, I guess, what inspires you to keep wanting to learn and keep wanting to know about that, which is what I say is truth and the only thing we have, the thing that is the one thing that never changes. And I call that um, the divine spirit, God. I mean, what do you call it and what it keeps you wanting to seek that connection. Okay, we didn't, um, another phenomenon that happened to me in high school, I played football, high school football, and at the, this was at the height, my last two years of high school, the height of being involved in the very evangelical church. And I remember that somehow in that point, I, I, had, I, I was, I don't know if it was disconnected or I lost a sense of ego. And when I made the touchdown, if, if I made a touchdown, it was like, you know, God did that. That was the, you know, it, 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 how we, we put it now and in, in this setting, it was like that was, you know, God manifesting. But I never took credit for it as, as, a, as a personal ego thing. And that pretty much, you know, went through the high school thing. So I got a sense of, of being kind of separated from earth stuff as opposed to being connected with something. And, and I wouldn't have described it as you all have described it this morning as being in, being connected with God and letting that come through. But that was the phenomena that I, that I learned and it, and it stuck with me. And so I've, there's a, the, there's a couple other moments and it's like when it's, it's a nanosecond where you all of a sudden see everything is just absurd. There's, you know, it's no connection. It's like all the sticks fell. And Edgar Mitchell, the um, astronaut in a talk that I had seen, said the same thing. When he was coming back from the moon, he goes, all of a sudden, everything just disintegrated for him. And he, he, uh, he described it as pickup sticks. And he had this cosmic moment connection where he, was, he had to go and further study that. And he created the uh, Institute of Noetic Sciences, which is the study of consciousness in a scientific way. He was a PhD, MIT engineer. So that seed has stuck with me. And, and so as time went on and different things popped up, like getting a real job, because there was no money in par parapsychology at the time, and I got disappointed and disillusioned with some of the experiments I did in, in grad school, um, that, that just stuck with me and it works. I don't use it all the time. I'm not really uh, very consistent with, with the practice, but there's a few practices that I use uh, that come from also my, my organization, the University of Metaphysics. Uh, the, the founders, Leon Masters, and he, used, he, he had studied Holmes and, and a whole bunch of the other people. So there's, uh, and then he started his organization in 1959 and created degree programs for going out and teaching and creating, you know, your own churches and things like that. And what he called practical mysticism. And that was, you know, it's like, okay, this is the, you can, everybody's a mystic. It's um, how, you know, here's you train to do certain things. And that's where I learned affirmations. Uh, and, and now we're finding scientifically that affirmations actually do rewire your brain uh, and create new neural connections that create a new experience for you in, in, in perceiving things. So that was, that was fun. And so that's, it's just been a part of my life ever since, but m most, you know, over the past many years, I've been pretty uh, linear and a parapsychologist by, by training and by degree, which is at the university of uh, Edinburgh, <laughs> I got to wear my uh, rugby shirt from Edinburgh because I took one class. Um, 
you know, training a scient the scientific method in, in trying to deal with parapsychological experiments and, and um, the, the experiments I did in grad school were um, psychokinetic, trying to influence a random number generator to go to do something. And, and after all that, that's pretty, pretty much what's disillusioned me, dropped out of grad school, joined the band, and, and then went and got a real job uh, doing aerospace engineering, medical engineering, automotive engineering, and, and all that. So it's just, it's just there. It, it, it resides, but I'm, I, I don't, I never saw myself as having a ministry. Yeah. Uh, well, one of the things that you said is, I believe that it is the mystics and it is the mystic within you that connects with the everything. And in those pick up sticks moments, in that cosmic moment, you know it. You know that you are the thing itself and everything around you is that thing itself and that you are immutable and you are uh, eternal. I, I, I had one major experience as a child, and I've said this many times, I was at Santa Monica Pier, uh, uh, body surfing and uh, with, the, uh, with the Girl Scouts, and I knew in a nanosecond I was the sun, the water, the salt, the sand, everything, and yet at 11 I couldn't even explain that. You know, so it's the mystics that bring that beautiful reality that you're talking about and taking us into those other places uh, that, that connect us with the allness. And I believe that the dreamer and especially the astral projection are dreams. I, I think it's fascinating. You keep a dream log um, that they are that reality that already exists. They're not, it's just the dream world. It's like from the third dimension to the fourth dimension, but it already exists. Tell me about, have you ever had any other prophetic dreams? Um, there have been a few, and, and I, did, I haven't told you about this, but um, the University of Edinburgh um, had two studies of precognitive dreaming. And I, I participate, participated in both of those. And in the first, the first study was everybody would just keep uh, over several months would just upload their dreams to a um, you know to a central database, and so that went on for many for a couple months. And so if somebody had a dream, they'd log in to the to the database and then and then uh, you know write down what their dreams were. It gets time date and a uh, time and stamp time stamped and date stamped. Um, into the log. Then, at the end of the study, they would randomly choose a, um, no, 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 what, what they did on this study, I'm, I'm mixing up the studies. In this study, they would look back and then anybody that had a dream earlier and some event happened in the, in, in the world, that, that matched up that dream, then they would also load that up. And that, hap that had to happen at the end of the, of, the, of the dream study period. And so the only one that I had was I, uh, um, waves washing over a shore um, and debris flows and all that kind of stuff. And then the hurricane, I, I forgot which hurricane it was, happened and uh, we had a friend in Jersey on the Jersey show, shore that showed almost the exact scene I saw, but they didn't complete configure that. Uh, con, con, <laughs> they didn't uh, think that that was a, a, a direct, you know, psychic hit. The second study was every week, Monday through Friday, we would upload into the server. And then on that Saturday, they would randomly select using a random number generator, a um, video on YouTube. And I, I'm, I'm not sure if they categorized it to movies or whatever, but each week you'd upload your dreams and then at the end they, they'd show the video and then you would uh, upload your impressions or did do you think that any of your dreams actually um, picked that out. And so I, I missed on probably four to eight of those uh, uh, on a week. But the one that I had was I, was on, I ride a motorcycle and I was on a motorcycle overlooking um, – the bay in San Francisco, and I was on a steep hill, and so I was nervous about motorcycles on hills when you're stopped and trying to get around is, is tough stuff. And, and that was like on a Tuesday or so. And on that Saturday was the movie, um, 
uh, Steve McQueen in the um, Mustang. Bullet. Bullet. It was bullet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I go, I hit this. This is great. And I submitted all my information and, and there was something about there there were so they were so rigid in their in their rules for, for scoring things that, that they didn't consider that a hit. I did. <laughs> I do too. I'm telling you, I'm you're one hundred percent you yes. <laughs> oh, oh. Go ahead. I'm sorry I interrupted you. No, no, no. That's that. So, so I, I, that's why I've kept a log all these years, uh, which is essentially an email to myself with uh, the time and date stamp of, of anything that's happened to see if it comes comes true, and maybe a few others that were just, you know, kind of minor things. You would expect really deep emotional things to um, to happen or or to, to influence how you are because. In, in the in the dreams, your metadata that you put up in the dream is not only the events that happened, but it's also how did you feel? What did you know when, when you woke up? What was the residual thoughts and feelings and, and all that? And a lot of times, in interpreting dreams, it, it has to be centered around kind of your own psychic and your own experiences uh, on on coming up with that. So that was fascinating. Yeah. No, I'll just tell you briefly. I haven't told the public this yet. Uh, but Bill Rotella, who's with us today, I had a, such a vivid dream about him. And I said, you were the star of it. I'll be really brief with this. We were at a concert. And there were thousands of people and we were packed in and he was playing the piano. Bill doesn't play the piano with us ever. And after the concert, I was following him as everybody was saying hi to him. And I said, we can't do this because of COVID. We're going to be ill. And he turned to me and he said, oh, no, don't you know that past? And bottom line, when we collaborated and talked about this, I said I had a dream. I was so happy that he was affirming that this was gone. You know what I'm saying? I woke up thinking, oh, good. There's an affirmation from above that this is gone. And what I did not know is his, well, I did know his father was a famous pianist and his mother was a concert pianist. And he had just received his dad's piano uh, after his dad made his pant transition and her favorite one of the things she said all the time is, this too shall pass. And so what it, we both interpreted from that was that it was a message from her just saying, don't worry, you'll be fine, this too is going to pass. And you couldn't miss it when he told me his part of it. I didn't understand it. But I think those things happen in that other dream dimension. There's the awake dimension, which I think is the third dimension, and in the dream dimension, which is the fourth dimension, where you know what's happening. In this, you're still working. You still go into work every day. I've been working from home now since March. Oh, are you more in tune with other people and other things? That was just an off of the hand question. <laughs> uh, with people at work? N not just people, period. Ed. It doesn't matter. Uh, more isolated at this point. Yeah, you know, more in front of a screen for ten hours a day. Oh, stare yeah. at the ceiling for the rest of the night. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I, I have been um, uh, more isolated. I've been working from home too, but I've been more isolated, and I uh, am so in tune with a couple people, which I won't mention. That I well, once Kate, and um, this is I I. <laughs> One was, and I, I don't want to take up our time, but I'll be really brief with this. <laughs> One time at three in the morning, I woke up and I heard her talking to Ian. And I thought, oh my God, because I'm on some of her equipment, like, you know, net, you know, Netflix and stuff. I thought, oh my God. I, uh, and so the next morning I said, did you wake up at three to say goodbye to Ian? And she said, yes. And I said, I heard you as plain as day and the conversation and everything. There's been a couple of incidences like that. And she says, oh, great. Now she says, my mo the TV's talking to my mother. <laughs> <laughs> it only scared her. And she did not buy into it. But she had got up and gotten up at that time. And she was saying goodbye to Ian. And they had, uh, and I just thought, I mean, I'm telling you, that there is that universe that is so great that inspires me to want to know more. What, how do you feel when you have those moments of connection? And I guess mainly what I want are tools. How you came in the way you are. You came in the way you are and you were open and receptive for this. I don't know how you were raised or if it's genetic or anything else. I, I have no clue. 
but what have, has this helped you in your life uh, live a, a fulfilled life, a whole life, that connection with something greater? And what spiritual tools can you leave with us? If any. <laughs> no, you, I know you can. No, I know you can. <laughs> There's a screwdriver. Uh, <laughs> yes. I can teach it. And that engineer in me says, this is how we do this. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah beyond yeah. that, beyond that. Because you I, are I, multifaceted. <laughs> okay. So the um, when, when I had those cosmic conscious moments, the nanosecond that everything was absurd, it was, you know, everything came apart, and then, and then you get back into just going and doing things again. Um, Certainly meditation, uh, it, it, what little that I practice of that, our, our, um, our university system and, uh, teaches two types of meditation. One is uh, manifestation meditation, and the other one is, is connectedness with all that is, uh, God, and so on. And a few times I've, I've done the, uh, I've done manif manifestation uh, affirmations, and in, you know, several times uh, when I do that, and I don't do it all the time, it works. It actually, you know, um, and, and, and very conclusive uh, evidence that it works. It was getting a job at a certain place at a, you know, a certain rate, that type of thing. Uh, the other, um, the, here's the tool that I use for my engineering teams. Uh, a couple of them. One is go sleep on it and, and you know, uh, I'll hammer them before the weekend. I go, we got a problem to solve. This is what you have to do. Now just go sleep on it, you know, and come back, wake up Saturday and Sunday or Monday, and then and then come in with your ideas. And uh, just the relaxation of, of getting away from things. You know, all the inventors had different ways of doing that. Um, the other thing is, is get sleep. You know, I actually have one of the one of the guys that worked for me. I, I he had to get a, give me a sleep log because I'd see him on on screen at two or three in the morning. Um, but use vision, and and that's the best tool for anybody. I mean, even for linear people, um, when you want to create a satellite system, if you want to create a transportation system, if you want to create a medical device, and and Job Steve Jobs was great at this is he had an idea and a vision of what was, what was, what it already was. And that's kind of the so be it, uh, you know, aspect of, of, of the teachings that we both come from. And we, we would set up a vision on the team that would say, okay, there's certain, certainly there are requirements. It has to measure things. It has to look at the ocean. It has to tell what the ocean's temperature is from, you know, 20 miles above the earth. Um, but once you give somebody a vision, and, and that's and that was the whole thing, create the vision. That, that's on my professional meser, uh, resume. Create the vision, execute to success, and then have fun doing it. But creating the vision, and this is what I've learned also from metaphysics, is that you don't create a, you, the vision that you create is, is more of an emotional uh, vision, not so much as the details. Because the detail, if you if you give the the emo, for instance, the emotional vision of the launch of the satellite going into orbit, opening up its solar panels, turning on its cameras, and measuring Earth's uh, measuring the ocean's temperature within a half degree, um, then every everybody that has that vision kind of has their own job to come up with a th things that have to happen to make that you know, all come together into one, one thing. And so create the vision and then let it happen is, is one of the tools I used. Um, get, get sleep, pay attention to your dreams. And I'd give affirmations on, on, um, oh, <laughs> having played in a band seven nights, six nights a week for seven weeks straight, several times during my life, um, we get no sleep and then we have to get up in the morning and go to our jobs. And so the affirmations I gave, uh, I give my team people who are shy on sleep is before, take three uh, deep breaths uh, in a rhythm of uh, inhale for four counts, hold for eight counts and, and exhale for four counts. Variations on your lung capacity, of course. And then after two or three of those, 
your affirmation is is when I wake up in this when I wake up in the morning, independent of how many hours sleep you're going to get. This works. This works for me on one hour of sleep or eight hours of sleep. You will feel as if you got a full night's rest. You'll be completely regenerated and uh, will um, face the day with, you know, with creativity, with discipline and, and those type of things. And I gave that to a few, uh, several people. And that's really crazy for an aerospace company <laughs> to, you know, to do those type of things. Uh, but it was receptive. And I think there was a few people that it actually worked for. But out of the, you know, over thousand times that I've had to drive home from between two and five in the morning, uh, only one time did it fail. <laughs> and I fell asleep in a meeting. But um, otherwise, it pretty much, well, it, it worked. And, and you make a promise to your body at the end of the day when you get through that, that you're going to crash like a big dog and sleep, you know, get, get a lot of sleep afterwards. So I think the, the tool is, is vision and the tool is affirmations. And, and they just seem to work. And now as we go further into the study of the brain studies using uh, CAT scans and uh, MRIs and all that, and they study the brain more on things, it, it's, it, it's true. It's just that metaphysics folks uh, knew about this for centuries. <laughs> and now they're just proving it with machines. I agree. Well, that was wonderful. And, uh, you know, I always say it's love and law working together. Law just says, yes, it is the thing itself. And uh, when you have that passion, and it's not just like saying, I always used to say, uh, 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 my mother would say, I want a house and a lot in Beverly Hills, but you never really did. And so I always, when I want something, I go, oh, I want a house and a lot in Beverly Hills. But when I have the passion behind it, and one of the things uh, that mani many things have manifested for me with the passion, not the words, but the feeling nature of God, that love within you, that passion that works with that mind. That And look at you, you've got that wonderful inner, uh, that uh, technical mind that is so precise, which is even better, I think, in that visioning. But uh, uh, one of the things is I worked in Hollywood forever, and then I had babies, and I thought, this is ridiculous. People, Other people are raising my babies. So I went out on my own, but my desire was never to start my own business. It was the love and the passion for having to be with my children it's like why do you have these kids as you farm them out you know <laughs> at least well maybe i could have farmed them out to better parents i don't know, <laughs> you know oh. to raise them that would have been good but it's interesting anything i've ever gotten in my life came from the passion the vision maybe that or something greater i always say and but it always comes from the passion of what uh, inspires me and excites me. And I agree with you 100% meditation, meditation, meditation for me to connect. Uh, I do it twice a day. I have a, a commitment morning and evening and uh, just connect and see what flows through you. So yeah. that's my close. You close. I want you to close here. <laughs> oh, um, um, or if you can't, if you can you can go a little longer if you want. Go ahead. <laughs> no, I, I, let's close. Um, uh, you know, because we thought we talked last night about that, and, and you were going to ask me for close. I think the close is this: is that there's got to be a lot of healing going on now, regardless of the uh, regardless of what happens in the elections you know, what, what, what other side wins, we've got a, a lot of healing to do and a lot of anger and a lot of fear has bubbled up and manifested and has been, has, has been emboldened and empowered. And so I think the, the, the greatest thing we can do now is, is really launch a unified vision of, of love, healing, and worthiness. I am doing meditations on worthiness and wholeness right now on uh, Monday through Friday. So there's that connection. Happy? <laughs> we got that one thread going. <laughs> so I, uh, this has been delightful. Will you come back, please? And, and, and on a Sunday sometime, I'll make sure you have lots of notice and everything. <laughs> please, will you do that? Sure. Okay, great, great. And in closing, thank you again for being with us. And it is my honor to introduce Bill Rotella again. 
So happy Bill's with us today. So I could tell our my story about you. <laughs> yeah, you didn't know that. You didn't know that I just had just got that piano. I mean, so that's no, how. that is amazing. Yeah. Uh, and Joe, boy, I enjoyed that. I enjoyed hearing you, man. I, I can relate on on many levels as far as the six, uh, you know, four sets a night, six nights a week. <laughs> Not sleeping. Sleep is a precious commodity, my friend. <laughs> but it was the time of our lives. Yeah, man, I know. I know. And that energy carried us through. That's right. I come up to Santa Barbara a bunch. I play up there, so uh, we'll hook up. I'd like to talk sure. to you. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Um, so, Pamela, when I saw the title, Tune Up, Tune In, and all that, you know, I started I started thinking about this song I wrote uh, in 2016. We're not going to connect it to an event that happened in 2016, but... Mm -hmm. I had read an article about the homeless in Ventura, and uh, I just started kind of getting more uh, speaking up a little bit. You know, Bob Dylan once said, you know, tune out, turn off, wise up, you know. But sometimes we have to tune into what's happened. So this song is about that, you know. This is off that 2016 album. Praying for salvation for my sisters trying to stand their ground walking with my brothers now it's time to tear these towers down who do you think you're fooling i'm headed for the hilltop Gonna watch the raging waters rise Walking with my brothers Now it's time to see the countryside Who do you think you're fooling? Come and take my open hand And offer yours to me We'll make it to the other side I'll be the bridge that sets you free Cause I've been thinking all night While my heart pounds I'm river bound See the children skipping stones While parents soak their weary bones Minds are bleeding, mouths need feet Hearts are beating, breathing hope Who do you think you're fooling? Come and take my open hand And offer yours to me We'll make it to the other side I'll be the bridge that sets you free Cause I've been thinking all night Well, my heart pound A river bound Come and take my open hand and offer yours to me. We'll make it to the other side. I'll be that bridge that sets you free. Cause I've been thinking all night while my heart pounds. That river bound. The tides are turning, flags are burning, the river bell will be ringing soon. Blue bloods waded in too deep to see their king, they crowned a fool. Who do you think you're fooling? Who do you think you're fooling? That's it. Uh, <laughs> yay! <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. And uh, thank you. We can't, uh, we're very uh, cautious about uh, uh, copyright music. And you have, you just, you just have so many original songs and I love every single one of them. <laughs> and you. Okay, so now it's another person I love. Rev Lynn is going to close us out here. Rev Lenny. Hi, that was 
fun. Thank you so much, Bill. So now this is our opportunity to express the law of circulation perfectly with all of the wonderful information that's about to go on the screen. I'm waiting for it to get, get there it is. There's our offertory. So if you would all like to say this along with me and affirm how blessed we are with abundance in our lives together, divine love blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. And so it is, and that's the way it is. And there are a lot of ways to express your givingness and your appreciation uh, to our center. And thank you for watching our Sunday service. We love having you here. And if you feel like you've received value from this experience, you can support our ministry with a tax deductible donation. So visit our website, www.csl-pleasantvalley.org. We accept PayPal and Zelle, and um, we're grateful. <laughs> Your sacred donations are more than ever appreciated. So our mailing address is, and we know that sometimes people even pay, was a thing called cash? I don't know, heard about it. So our email address is CSL Pleasant Valley. 221 East Daily Drive, Suite Number 1, Camarillo, California, 93010. Our website, again, www.csl-pleasantvalley.org. And our email is cslpleasantvalley at gmail.com. And let me remind you that you can use that email or the website and request a spiritual mind treatment sent to you online, or you could call your practitioners. A list of practitioners is there on the website and on our page. So we wanna stay connected with you and this is a great way to stay connected by asking for prayer from us. And so having said all of this, let's do tie all of this up with a bow and uh, let's have a little closing treatment. So close your eyes, please, if you so wish, or if you just wanna look at our beautiful faces, go right ahead. Close your eyes and know it instantly. As I close my eyes, I'm aware of a presence, a loving, creative, powerful, generous, beautiful presence. And this presence is the presence that I express through and by means of all that I do. This is God. This is how I express all the good that's available to me. And so when I get up in the morning, I wake up, I suit up, I pray up, and I step up and have a wonderful, expressive life using the principles of science and mind, knowing that I am love in full expression in all that I think, say, and do. I trust my intuition. I trust guidance that comes through. I listen within. I do everything that I need to do that I feel I need to do by my intuition to move my life forward dynamically and to give greatly to everyone on my pathway. For I know that I only have what I'm giving and I am always giving love, lots of love. I'm so grateful for these truths of oneness with source and the ability to use my intuition and accept guidance and to give love. Very, very simple. I release these loving truths into the law of mind. I allow divine mind, God, to take care of the details while I enjoy my beautiful, expressive, abundantly supplied life. And together we say, and so it is. And so it is, turning hey. it over to Pam. Hey, Rem Pam. Hi, honey. Thank you so much. That was just so beautiful. And it did, it wrapped up all those those uh, uh, those loose ends, there weren't new loose ends. They were all woven together, all interconnected. So I just want to thank Joe. Thank you so much for being with us. This was wonderful. Lynn, Rev Betty Ann, uh, Buzz, uh, uh, and uh, uh, I know who else, uh, who am I missing? And Bill, oh, Bill and Bill, I love Bill. Sorry, Bill. And also uh, Spencer Gagan behind the scenes and Marcia Beebe behind the scenes. I love you and each and every one out there. God is the presence and the power. Have a bliss, blessed rest of your week. And so it is. I'll see you next Sunday and next uh, tomorrow in meditation. Thank you. Thank you all. <laughs>